Basically, in this lesson, guys, I'm going to be showing you games and positions where these big names, they actually got destroyed because their opponent, the same player, by the way, knew how to convert the advantage of controlling an open file, converting that into a win. And I know that many of you are going to be thinking, but I already went over lesson number 164. I already learned about the Karpovian style. We talked about all of this, but you're going to see, guys, if I show you these positions, you're not going to be able to to convert you're not going to be able to come up with the right plan yet because this just like tactics this takes time you only got really good at forks after you did hundreds of forks the same thing has to happen with positional patterns so anyhow this is the first game this is tarash as the black pieces he played c5 notice how the c file is going to be open for the white pieces d file for the black pieces and in the other game is exactly the same and i'm going to show you the entire game right but in the other game, Jades or Jates, he actually played a six. And you're going to see, guys, the reason why. But in both games, the white pieces were able to win the game because they understood, they really knew how to take advantage of an open file. So with that said, make sure to have your favorite drink. This is going to be a long lesson, but it's going to be a really powerful one. At least, at least that's the intention, right? So first game, we have d4, e6. C4, D5, and we just got into the Queen's Gambit. And the white pieces just played Knight F3. So Knight F6, Knight C3, Bishop E7. And guys, all of you should be familiar with this. If you're not, feel free to go back to lessons like number 50 and, and so on. Bishop G5, Castle. Then you're going to see Pawn to E3, Knight B to D7. This rook finally gets to the C file. We're getting ready for this opening. Either we're going to take them or if they take us, we take back with the bishop and the file is semi-open, right? So after c6, queen c2, d takes c4, finally bishop c4, and after knight d5, we take and the black pieces take on e7. At this point, if we take a look at the position, the only thing we're missing as the white pieces is to castle. So we castle and now after knight c3, guys, the question to you is how would you recapture? Would you capture with the queen or would you capture with the pawn? Well, I have a, a feeling that you thought of taking with the pawn to bring the pawn towards the center to control more of that center. But if you pay close attention to the black position, guys, they really need some space. This bishop needs a diagonal to get out. They're a little bit uh, uncomfortable. That's the only reason why the white pieces took with the queen. We need to continue to control e5 so that the black pieces cannot do it themselves. So it's not about only about our plans we need to be trying to pay attention to what our opponent needs to do to get a better position. At this point, we got uh, b6, of course, trying to develop the bishop, then queen d3, and this is a plan that we talked about several times in this course, but more specifically, when we talked about the Kali, um, I told you how Capablanca sometimes used this plan as the black pieces, right? So the idea is when the bishop goes to b7, I'm going to remove that bishop. And guys, why is it that we want to remove that bad bishop Trade it for our good bishop. Well, if you pay attention to this pattern that you should be tired of hearing me say it, if you look at the pawn structure for the white pieces, it is aiming at the queen side. That means I have more space. I need to be attacking there. But in order for me to attack successfully, I need targets. And guess what? After that bishop gets to b7, it is going to be defending c6, which is the pawn on the semi-open file that I am controlling. And don't forget... A weakness, a weak pawn, a weak square, it's only a weakness if we can actually take advantage of it. So anyhow, guys, after rook d8, there's another pattern here. Rook on the same file as my queen. That's a big no. Maybe it doesn't mean anything right now, but in the future, it could be, uh, I could be setting myself up to a tactic. So be prophylactic, get out of the way. For example, if I wanted to do a bad move like this, well, they could do knight c5, fork, and we cannot take it because of that pin, you see? So let's just avoid it. Queen e2. And then at this point in the game, we have the move c5. Now, this is the same position where in the second game that we're going to go over, the black pieces played a6 instead. And you're going to see how, again, the player with the white pieces, which by the way, I don't know how to pronounce the name, but I think it's Bogol Jubov or something like that. <laughs> if you know how, let me know in the comments. But basically, he was very comfortable in this kind of position type guy. So he played the same opening, got him to the same middle game, and he really understood, he knew what the plan was. So let me go back to the first game. 
and they played again c5. Now, all that the black pieces did here next was bishop b5, putting pressure on the knight, and number one, I'm thinking maybe we could take the knight, they take back, then I take on c5, b takes c5, and even though I cannot get the pawn right now, well, that's isolated, this pawn is isolated, so we have a strategic advantage. Now, I think that even without taking the knight, we could just take, they have to take with the pawn. If they take with the knight, then this knight comes into the game. Don't forget, my pieces are going to migrate to the queen side because that's what the pawn structure is indicating, okay? So after c5, bishop b5, we have c takes d4. And now, guys, we have talked about the benefits of having an isolated queen pawn, but in this case, you we have to go with the knight. Just like I said, the knight needs to come over to help us on the queen side. So we're trying to get to c6, and after bishop b7, I need you to pay attention to this. The moment that file um, opens, or we're putting pressure on it, semi-open file, eventually it gets opened. The moment we open it up, we start collecting the fruits. So bishop b7 to avoid this move, but then I know that all of you who have been following this course, you thought of rook c7. And the game is pretty much over at this point. Now, guys, I decided to put this game or to show you this game first because it's very simple. The next one is going to be a little bit more complicated and then more sophisticated and so on. But basically, this move now is very attractive because we know the power of the rook on the 7th rank. But here, it comes with a tempo. So they don't have time to kick me out. They have to protect the bishop. And after rook b8, I can tell you, I have been here myself where the black pieces are, very painful to play a move like this. And we've said it before, when you are attacking, when you have the initiative, typically the best move is a good looking move, like rook c7. When you're defending, typically the best defensive move is a very ugly move, like rook b8. But anyhow, after rook b8, now the only piece that is doing nothing, guys, we have to bring it into the game. And a few things about this. Number one, don't play mechanically. If we play mechanically, we're going to be thinking, oh, let me just double up the rooks on the C file. It only makes sense. Also, we might be like, oh, I'm putting so much pressure. Let me just go in and attack. The same thing. If you know this is a critical moment, let's spend some time. Let's take a look at the different candidate moves and try to find the most, uh, the most powerful one. And the move here, guys, is actually rook D1. Notice that we are pinning the knight. We have already two pieces attacking it, two defenders. So indirectly, I'm putting pressure, uh, I'm putting more pressure on that knight. And I'm just threatening knight c6, powerful fork. And if the bishop takes, bishop takes, then that's going to be three pieces putting pressure on that knight. So in the actual game, we got Tarash played, or Tarash played bishop d5, and then knight c6, bishop takes, bishop takes, game is over. Now, before we go on to the next game, feel free guys to set this position up against the engine anytime you want and see if you can convert because we got to make sure that once we are ahead by a piece we got to make sure that we know how to close the game but here you could see how we went from strategic advantage which is a control over an open file we penetrated and actually this comes back guys all the way from the beginning look if i play the queen's gambit i know that sooner or later this C file is going to open up. I know that this pawn structure, typically it, it requires me to attack on the queen side. So this is the benefit of knowing your openings. And you know that I don't really like you to focus too much on openings, but whatever you play, you gotta know the typical middle game plan. So we went from there to taking advantage over the C file. And eventually we got to the seventh rank. And again, the game is over. Now, second game, you're going to see that same position and actually let me go all the way to the beginning so d4 d5 c4 directly we get into the queen's gambit black pieces say no not today i'm not gonna take it and then after a few more moves we get to the same position so rook c1 you see before bishop b2 bishop d3 even before taking on d5 the rook comes over to the c file then c6 queen c2 d takes c4 now we take knight d5 we take on e7 and after queen takes, we finish development by castling. And now, after the knight takes, you guys are already experts in these positions, right? So taking with the pawn seems uh, the right move, but instead, we take with the queen to prevent them from doing e5 themselves. Then b6, 
I'm getting ready to do this plan of bishop a6, eliminate the bishop. But then after rook d8, I really don't like this tactical pattern. So I'm going to get out the way. And only after a6, I'm going to go back to focusing on my queen side. Now, guys, a little bit different than before. We cannot do b5 because they did a6. Even when they do, if they do c5, we cannot do b5. Now, before we get into the next few moves, pay attention to this move itself. We've said it many times. Every time we move a pawn in chess, weaknesses are created. So what weakness was created after a6 was played? Well, b6. It's not so easy to put pressure on, but pay attention to it because sooner or later, the white pieces are going to put pressure on those weak pawns. Now, the big question to you is, and like always, feel free to pause the video, see if you can come up with the next move for the white pieces. And here, if you found it, congrats, it's simple, but many people simply overthink these positions. The move, guys, is opening up the rook, that's it. When we're blocked by a pawn, we don't say this is a good foul for us, right? Because it's hard to remove a pawn. Like this rook, it doesn't really have a good scope here because the pawn is gonna be hard to move out the way. When we're blocked by a piece, pieces are easy to move. So we have bishop d3 getting onto this nice diagonal, but more importantly, I'm already taking the initiative by putting pressure on that pawn. Guys, simple target that I'm going to be drilling, putting pressure on, and that's going to give me that initiative. So after bishop d3, bishop b7, and one more, one more time, see if you can pause the video and find the next move for the white pieces. Well, the next move is so simple that it's easy to, to miss. And the move is actually bishop e4. That's my target. That's it. I don't need to go like crazy to attack the king. My game is on the queen side. So after bishop e4, we got rook c8. And then, of course, rook c3 getting ready for uh, to double up on that file. We could do it with the rook. We could do it with the queen. And then we're adding more pressure to c6. But at the same time, we're putting more pressure on h7 so rook c3 was played and now i want you to pay attention to what happened in the game the black pieces said you know what enough is enough you put in pressure let me have some fun as well so they played knight f6 put in pressure on the bishop bishop goes back knight d5 put in pressure on the rook rook goes back knight b4 put in pressure on the bishop and notice how that knight went from passive too very very aggressive it's like like a crazy knight right <laughs> but here i have been in this position before like the black pieces all of a sudden you get a break breakthrough you improve your pieces it feels like you get this initiative but it is pointless guys because this is just temporary and on lesson 138 we talked about short-term assets versus or factors versus long-term factors this i'm gonna kick it out sooner or later this weakness is going to be there for a long time. And this reminds me of, if you remember lesson 110, when I showed you the game that I lost against a, a grandmaster, this is what he did. He let me believe that I was attacking and, and, and winning the game. And then he activated his pair of bishops, which was a strategic advantage, and he destroyed me. So that's what you see here. Now, after knight b4, bishop goes to c4, then pawn to a5, and then a3. Goodbye, knight. You have to go back to being passive. And then once the knight moved, we gotta go back to our main plan. Guys, main plan, pawn structure is telling you it. The main plan is over here on the queen side. Who's defending? Well, the bishop. We already talked about this other plan that Capablanca used a lot. So bishop a6, removing the bad bishop because that's what's keeping everything together on the queen side. So after bishop a6, bishop takes, queen takes, rook a8, and now the next move. From now on, guys, it's like the pieces are telling you what they want to be. This is the target. Everything revolves around that. So queen c4, then rook goes back to c8, and now guess what? This knight knows exactly where to go. Knight e5, centralized putting pressure on c6. So c5 and then queen a6. Notice how we're putting pressure on the, the base pawn on b6. Then queen d6. And now, just like in the other game, the only piece that is doing nothing finally comes to the d file. This file is going to open up at any moment. And after rook a8, queen goes to b7, knight e7. And guys, see if you can find the final move. Simple, simple move that made 
the black pieces resign. Well, simple fork, knight c4, I'm hitting the queen, I'm hitting b6. And yes, it is true that knight e7 was probably a big blunder, but at the same time, it's very easy to see how even in this position, it's clear that the white pieces have a superior position. And this is a game against a very strong player. If you're playing someone like me, I was probably going to collapse way earlier. But the main thing that I really want you to pay attention to is the same pattern. From the moment we put the rook on c1, and there you go. So rook goes to c1, we know what the plan is all about. Sooner or later, we started to uh, put pressure on it. So my queen gets out of the way, rook gets on this file, let me move my queen, and then bishop d3, that's my, that's my target. Bishop e4, that's my target. They defend it. Okay, so then rook c3, continue to put pressure on it. It almost never gets as smoothly as they say in the books. Like, oh, look, he did this and this in perfect game. No, you're going to get some counterplay like you see in f6, knight d5. Nothing wrong with going back. It's not like you're going to lose the game. Just keep your, your eyes laser focused on that target. So a3, knight goes back to d5. Now, my rook sooner or later is going to get back at it, but I need to remove the defender. So that's it. And now it's just a matter of putting pressure, putting pressure. It is very uncomfortable to defend these guys as the black pieces. 95. And keep paying attention to that file. Sooner or later, we just get the pawn. So with that said, I know that by now you should be getting a little bit tired. <laughs> but we got a few more positions to go over. So let me bring the next one over here. And guys, this is another game where we have a Fortnite opening followed by bishop b5 right so bishop b5 bishop b4 castle castle nothing extraordinary and then after d3 we got bishop takes e 3 so first concession here the black pieces decide to give up the pair of bishops yes we get doubled isolated pawn but we know this also brings um semi-open files for the rooks and it brings more control over the center so d6 then I don't want this bishop to come to g4, a little bit annoying. So I'm going to do a prophylactic move, paying attention to my opponent's plan as well. And after h6, I'm simply bringing my rook to e1. Guys, notice how this rook is blocked by his pawn. So this is not an open or semi-open file, but we know this file is likely to get open after, d, after d4 is played. So a6, they're asking me what to do with the bishops. I want to keep my pair of bishops for as long as I can. So I go back, then bishop d7, Bishop goes back to b3, knight a5, so they really want to get the bishop back, and that's okay. And now I want you to pause the video and see if you can come up with the next move. Don't look for anything fancy. This is more to see if you understand this position, guys. If you understand this position type, if you can come up with a plan. So take your time, take as long as you need, and look at your candidate moves. Try to understand your pawn structure. Now, if we look at the pawn structure in the center, it is aiming at the king side. It would be nice to expand there. So the next move was actually knight h2, and I'm ready to do f4. We've seen this plan in the Vienna lesson 34, King's Indian defense, the peers, too many times. And of course, this knight could also at some point go to g4, go to f1, and find a better square. So it's a very interesting move that, uh, that we have to be familiar with. So now they take on b3, and... I know it's very interesting to take with the pawn to fix my pawn structure, but the white pieces decided to take with the A pawn. And this is actually the best move. Now my rook, I don't have to invest a move to, to develop it. It is already putting pressure through a semi-open file. So, and I know that it seems like, oh, it's never going to happen, but I can even think of ideas like B4, B5 at some point to open up the file even more. And then I penetrate to the seventh rank. But anyhow, knight h7, so the black pieces are being consistent with uh, their plan as well. And after f4, e takes a four, bishop takes a four. We can say the white pieces completed their development. Now it is time to continue to put pressure. So f5 was played. And now critical moment again, we're playing this ordinary position. How do we continue? And more specifically, the question is, should we take, wait for them to take us, maybe advance upon what would you do, guys? And there's one move here that is significantly better than the other two. So see if you can come up with the reasoning behind it. Well, the move here, believe it or not, is e5. Number, there are a few reasons for it, but the, the first one that I hope came to mind, guys, is that if I take on f5, 
then they're going to take back and all of a sudden they have three pieces on the king side. The queen is ready to jump in as well. Very easy for them to play. With e5, notice how the bishop is not active, the rook is not active, the knight not so much either. So that's why e5 is, uh, is the better move. Besides, we are fighting for control over the dark squares in the center, guys. So when I do e5, if they take, forget about it, my bishop is going to be in the center. I'm going to be the owner of not only the e file, but also the dark squares in general. So d takes e5, rook takes e5, getting ready to double up, putting pressure on this pawn. And after knight f6, we got queen e2. So give me the e file. Rook e8, they say, not now. I couldn't get the f file. Where, well, I'm going to fight for that e file. Knight f3, knight d5, hitting that bishop. And guys, this next move should be very easy for all of you. How many times have I, have I mentioned this pattern of the bishop being two squares away from the knight? That means we control that knight. So after, uh, I'm sorry, so after knight d5, bishop d2, queen goes to f6, and then my other rook gets to the open file. So after this game, the first two games that we had, if you don't really appreciate open files, I don't know what else to do. <laughs> Anyhow, rookie one was played, then pawn to c6, and look, pay attention to those dark squares. The moment they, uh, as soon as they put another pawn on light squares, the dark, dark squares around it are going to be, around those pawns are going to be weak. So we got pawn to c4, Let's see what that knight is going to do. Knight c7, bishop c3. You see, I'm killing them through the dark squares. So knight e6, be careful with tactics. We, we have been talking about strategic patterns today, but we also know our tactics. This covert attack could be in the air. Do we have to get ahead of ourselves? No, you don't want to be now doing something like queen d2 to defend the bishop and then try to set up a tactic. No, don't fall in love with cheap tricks. Keep that tension there and let's try to be more energetic, continue to improve our position. So after knight e6, we got queen f2. Remember the dark squares? Well, I'm going to improve my queen. So rook f8, queen b6, just finding a second weakness. So I have my powerful rooks putting pressure on e6, f5. Now, how could they defend b7 as well? They could, but that's gonna mean that's going to mean more pieces, black pieces tied up to the defense. So rook b8, very ugly move. And now guys, combination time. So what's the final combination here for the white pieces? And we've said it many times, when your pieces are active, look at this, double tap rooks, active bishop, powerful knight, active queen, tactics have to be in the air. Now, if you post the video and you found it, congrats. I'm going to actually show you the engine and notice how the engine says 455, rook takes e6. If you did something else like king f1, okay, you're still winning. Bishop before, you're still winning. But rook e6 is just the end. So after rook e6, we got queen c3 and the rook got to the seventh rank. So all of that pressure owning the e-file, ultimately we wanted to get to the seventh rank, just like in the very first game. So rook e7, and now I'm hitting the bishop, putting pressure on g7. So bishop e8, queen c7. So nice to play this now. I'm hitting... The rook hitting g7, of course, this queen is defending it, but we know automatically all of you guys who have been with me from the beginning, the moment you, you're thinking, oh, I'm attacking a pawn, but the queen is defending it from far away, I'm pretty sure that automatically you thought of interference, or I think, do we call it interference or obstruction? Well, one of the two, but the point is that now if I put my rook on e5 or my knight on e5, the queen won't be able to do anything to defend the pawn. So after bishop h5 to connect the rooks, we got rook e5. So rook 1 goes to e5, we're hitting g7, and now forget about putting the, the rook in the way because I take this one. If you put the bishop in the way, can we do rook f7? Yeah, I could do rook f7. Can I do rook f7? Yeah, yeah, rook f7, rook f7, queen b8. So at this point, the black pieces simply resigned. Now, guys, I know that this has been a lot and you're going to feel like, oh, but I already knew this. Well, we gotta, we had to have this lesson and we have so many more lessons where I'm going to try to reinforce this same strategic pattern. Now, the last thing that I want you to do is take a look at this position. This is going to be your homework and see if you can find how Grandmaster Yasser, he actually found 
the winning continuation for the white pieces. I'm going to leave the answer to it in the description of this video or maybe in a, in a comment, but uh, try to spend 10, 15, 20 minutes, 24 hours, as long as you need, and then take a look at that answer that I'm leaving for you. Like always, let me know in the comments what you thought of this lesson, too long, or maybe we needed more exercises. Just let me know, okay? Because we're gonna have many more like this one. So with that said, I will see you guys in our next lesson.